I'm gonna collect much energy with that. My goodness. Have you ever seen so much shit? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, we just got back to the boat. About to prepare it to head a little further down south. And this time we're equipped with another $1,500 worth of batteries. Oh, round up. It was $1,580. You might as well tell me it was $1,600. Uh, here, look, That's a lot of money to invest in <laughs> air conditioning, I think, if you ask me. But well, it's more than just AC. We wouldn't we, need uh, much for everything else, but the AC is what takes it all. That also enables us to be electric off the grid, though, too, because we can now, you know, get trolling motors at a minimum and use those for pull us. Man, there's the batteries. Uh, damn. Made yeah. in China. Two hundred. And 72 amp hour. 16 of those in a row for 48 volts. It's 14 kilowatt hours. A thousand watts of AC for 14 hours straight. It's quite a bit. Or 2,000 watts for seven hours. I estimate about 2,000 watts is what we would cruise the boat on at around four or five knots. Find the sweet spot that's 2,000 watts and just keep it right there. And you know, seven hours of cruise is a good day. 272 amp hours. That's what we're working with per cell. We put 16 of these together to have 48 volts. That means 15 kilowatt hours of power. Sweet. And this is our old one right here. I'm five amps. <laughs> I'm dangerous. I'm with the iron polymer. Iron phosphate, much safer. So, out with the old and in with the new. Sweet. <sighs> That'll keep us cool in Key West, no yep. doubt. Yeah, that'll run. I mean, we'll run the AC for eight hours, and then still have another eight hours we could run it, but instead we'll cook and let the uh, battery charge back up. Because we'll be done sleeping after eight hours. Bam! See, and they're all going to be right down there. Our old fuel tank spot. Swapping fuel for fuel. Ironically, the 18-gallon gas tank at 33 kilowatts per gallon held a lot more energy with 18 gallons of gas, but of course it burns up dinosaur bones. You don't want to burn dinosaur bones. No Let's... need for fracking when we can... Well, this still involves some sort of fracking and drying. Yeah, the lithium mining, we're not going to lie. Lithium mining is a uh, very environmental error. But as many people have pointed out, the amount of energy and the amount of detrimentalness to the environment is still twice as good as using an internal combustion engine. So, the carbon footprint is still half as much on an electric setup, even though there is mining lithium involved. Bet your ass. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's a big debate about that. Actually, yeah. Donut Media recently published that too, that people were saying electric cars were just as terrible as icy cars, ice being internal percussion engine. Yeah, and whether or not it be worth it to use the nuclear power that we have since it's already at our fingertips. They say even just mining it and turning gas into electricity is twice as good as a carbon footprint as an internal combustion engine car. And even better once you convert more of the grid to green energy, such as solar panels. Yeah. 1260 watts of solars. Got two more right there. I kind of want some more. We'll no, we need a wind turbine. That's or we need to set up our wind turbine. The one we have in the box. Maybe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, lithium iron phosphate. 272 amp hours times 16 cells and about the space I think three group 29s would fit. Our last lithium batteries were five amp hour cells. That's those guys. That's three of those little bitty guys right there. 272 Five. I was planning on water jetting. There's a piece like this. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. But we're gonna have to make some jumpers like these wires instead of using a tin to go over them like that. Because uh, the water jet machine was shut down for COVID. Mm -hmm. Time yes. to connect some new batteries. Batteries, they've happened to me. 
I'm making jumpers. Uh, our system is 48 volts, probably around 30 amps most of the time max. We can peak at 60, but I don't. I think when we were running the microwave and something else, we only ever saw 35. So, 12 gauge wire. Of course, it's cheaper to buy them with insulators. Where's that other box? So I'm stripping insulators off and then making these. And then you feed on a heat shrink. And you grab your next BMS wire. And then you grab another piece of heat shrink. And put those two together. Slide that here right on there. A lot of people use a crappy crimp. I use this pair. You see they've got really strong jaws that do a really good crimp job. And all the rest you would expect on a boat. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it only took one time leaving her outside overnight, maybe. Getting busy and whoops, I left them out with my tools. And then he's running up. And there's three. All right. So you have how 14, many to do? 16 total? 15. There's 16 cells, so there'll be 15 connectors in between them all. Hmm. And then one on the end gets his own little solo. He'll just go by himself to the last cell. I see. On the termination cell. Yeah. And look at that fitment. Well, let's use your show. Boom! All right. Here, let me show you. Yeah. Yep. I made my little BMS connectors for the first cell going to negative and then so on and so forth for each cell jumping down the line. But I didn't count my wires. And it turns out there's actually 15 on this harness. For a 16 cell setup, I need 17 wires. My other two <laughs> belong to this other connector over here. And there, of course, is my red positive wire. Oh, on the BMS? So, yeah, it's on the BMS. So I'll have to connect this to one single eyelet, like I have this one. I actually need to go back and remove this one and make it to a single eyelet also. And then the 15 wires in the middle need to have the jumpers that connect two batteries and monitor the current between the two, or the voltage. So Sounds complicated. I need about five more ring terminals and some more heat shrinks. And about another hour, and then I can reinstall the BMS. So. God, you know what you need. <laughs> Batteries. See how they all join together? Sensor wire on each. Yeah. <clears throat> In series they go. I need to get my other connector. There it is. Um, this one goes over here. I decided for the safety's sake to only hook up the negative on each and get them all in place. And then I'll go back and add the positive, which will slowly build a pack from 3.2 to 7.4 on and so forth to 48 volts. As I connect each one up. I need to go make my power cables for the final leg right there. That's the positive out. And then the other end will be the negative out. And that one will go. I gotta go make power cables still. The workbench. So, yeah, there's a 40 amp fuse, 60 amp BMS. All the little bitty wires that run each little cell hooked in with their jumper. And yeah, it's all secured and not going anywhere. So, that's a good thing. <coughs> Solid battery pack. Prepared for boat flippage.
we're not flipping the boat. And now this is what he's applying. Liquid tape. It's like electrical tape. It's waterproof. Should prevent corrosion to get in any of the stainless hardware that wouldn't corrode anyways. But, <clears throat> you know, it also means that if this boat happens to go underwater, at least this portion won't be draining electricity out and we could maybe salvage it within six hours or 12 hours or something. Prepare for the worst and enjoy the best. All right. This is the name of the program and it's a yellow elephant is the one that gives you the most data but it only works on an old version of Android. The new version for some reason just doesn't include all the great features. Like an event log is at the bottom to tell you everything that's happened. Um, you know, different days and times. You've got a menu down here that tells you more about your speed and your mileage because this is actually designed for an electric bicycle and health monitor button over here I'm not sure what that does but it gives you a score that's it's kind of dumb because it says our score is bad and our score is not bad and then we've also got battery state and parameter settings and there it says a lot more info about the batteries our current coming in which is on the main screen but also temperatures uh, number of cycles which doesn't count as any yet today's the first day and it's only gone from 57 down to 50 and back up to 56 so far um, and then there's also the individual battery cells which you can then track by the graph and view them that way back up and see another one and that's current and voltage. Um, I think there's another way to look at. There's another graph current here. Yeah, that's the current from the solar panels, of course. Doing nothing, coming in yesterday, sun goes out, goes out yesterday, sun comes in, comes back up. So give us a couple days and that'll actually look like a real good up down graph of our usage. It's very exciting. It's a beautiful thing. On a Catalina. 30, 1200 watts. Yeah, 1200 watts. 1200 watts. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, push the subscribe button and let us know. It doesn't cost you anything, but it sure means a lot to us. See you next time.